Good morning. I'm Councilmember Mark Joan. I chair of the Committee on Small Business, and I'd like to welcome you to our vote today on four bills. Proposed intros 2333A, 2335A, 2356A, and 2359A, which seek to accelerate the recovery of the restaurant industry and ensure restaurants can succeed in the post-COVID marketplace. Even before the pandemic, owning and operating a restaurant in the city was challenging. 80% of restaurants typically go out of business within the first five years of opening. Between labor and inventory costs, government regulations, and steep competition, operating a restaurant at a profit can be extremely challenging. And yet, before the pandemic, tens of thousands of New Yorkers still chose this line of investment and work. The pandemic and the resulting restrictions on in-person dining, while certainly necessary for public health, dealt a devastating blow to restaurant owners. Restaurants were forced to survive on depleted revenues and reinvent business models while adapting to safety protocols, while third-party platforms, which had previously accounted for a small percentage of orders, were suddenly the lifeline for many restaurants. To ensure restaurants could survive throughout the pandemic, this committee passed Local Law 51 and 52 of 2020 which prevented platforms from erroneously charging restaurants for phone orders that did not occur and capped the fees that the platforms could charge restaurants. This committee then extended both of these laws through the passage of Local Law 87 and 88. As the city has reopened and the dark days of the, of the pandemic are hopefully behind us, the restaurant industry will begin to recover. Certain consumer habits may remain, however, that will make it more difficult for restaurants to succeed, mainly consumers who become accustomed to ordering on third-party platforms that charge a substantial fee per order for the marketing and delivery service they provide may continue to use these platforms. According to Scott Duke Commoners, a professor at Harvard Business School, I quote, people have gotten much more used to ordering food and other products through delivery service. Some of that will decline once it's safe to do things in person, of course, but new habit formation is powerful, end quote. A New York State Restaurant Association survey from March 2021 found that among restaurant owners in New York whose off-premise business increased compared to pre-COVID levels, over 65% say their higher off-premise sales made up less than 30% of their lost sales. Intro 2359 will extend the cap on fees for six months to give the restaurant industry more time to recover from the damage caused by the pandemic. The rise of third-party platforms is also apparent from their corporate strategies. Uber acquired the delivery service Postmates in November 2020 and December of 2020, DoorDash made its public market debut. The DoorDash stock rose 86% during its initial public offering, one of the biggest IPOs of 2020, at a time when over 110,000 restaurants were closing across the country, including over 5,000 in New York City. The platforms were experiencing a dramatic increase in profits. This committee has conducted three oversight hearings this legislative session on the rise of third-party delivery platforms in the city. During these hearings, small businesses and advocates have highlighted issues with these platforms, including listing restaurants on their platforms without permission, high commission fees, and the use of app-generated phone numbers to charge even more commission, often when an order didn't take place. I am especially proud of my bills that we're voting on today, intros 2333, 2335, and 2356. Intro 2333 will prevent the platforms from adding restaurants to their platforms without the explicit agreement of a restaurant owner. The platform's practice of adding restaurants without the owner's consent robs and deprives the restaurant owner of the decision of whether they want to contract with a platform. This practice is wrong, and the platforms have even acknowledged this practice is bad for diners, drivers, and restaurants. The other two bills, intro 2335 and 2356, 
will provide essential protections to ensure restaurants are not erroneously charged for phone orders that did not result in an actual transaction and will require the platforms to list an establishment's direct telephone number so consumers can directly contact a restaurant without the restaurant being charged by a platform. The package of bills we're voting on today will ensure that restaurants have the tools that they need to succeed in the post-COVID world. I am one of the most pro-business council members and believe in the free market. However, regulation and the belligerent behavior of the third-party platforms is necessary. We must give the hard-working restaurant owners in this city a fighting chance to survive, especially with the increase in COVID cases and the Delta variant, which could mean again that restaurants could be looking at the closure to in-dining. As the chair of this committee, it has been my top priority to ensure that mom and pop shops, our micro businesses, remain the backbone of the city's economy. From suspending personal guarantees on small business leases to cutting government fines and rules and regulations, it has been an honor to serve the hardworking small business owners of this city. With that said, I'd like to thank my chief of staff, Reggie Johnson, Austin Sackler, my legislative aide, our legislative counsel, Stephanie Jones, policy analyst, Noah Meixler, the speaker for his hard work and commitment to this very important issue and our small businesses, and the financial analyst, Aliyah Ali, for all their hard work in preparing for this hearing. I'd also like to thank Deputy Director Rachel Cordero from the Council's Legislative Division, who's been working on this for many of weeks and months. I'd like to turn it over to Councilmember Moyer to deliver a statement on this bill, uh, proposed introduction 2359. Councilmember? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Jonai, and thank you to my colleagues for uh, allowing me the opportunity to speak uh, on this bill. Uh, the restaurant industry and its workers have been an essential pillar of our economy. They represent thousands of jobs given to New Yorkers. We have the opportunity and the responsibility to protect our mom and pop shops and ensure that they can survive and not enable billion dollar companies and their investors to continue getting richer at the expense of our restaurants. Let me highlight some of the things that we heard from the restaurants during uh, the previous hearings when they were referring to the third party apps. Uh, one restaurant owner said they know what they're doing. Uh, they've been finding ways to take advantage of their role in the restaurant ecosystem. Others have said these are not companies that act in good faith. They are predatory and parasitic. The cap helps us survive. Putting in the caps gives us a fighting chance to survive. We urge you to save us by permanently capping third-party delivery fees, which will be very important as restaurants try to recover from the pandemic and long into the future. For far too long, there's been uh, an imbalance of power between these third-party food delivery services and restaurants. These businesses should not have to be pressured into accepting these fees in order to remain viable and competitive. Allowing the temporary cap to expire would completely handicap the recovery of so many businesses that are just starting to get back on their feet. As one of the greatest cities in the world, we need to stand by our small business owners each and every day. And I just want to thank uh, all my colleagues for joining me in helping to uh, vote to pass intro 2359 and not allow the temporary cap to expire. Uh, thank you so much, Chair Jonai, for all of the great work that you have done in spearheading uh, this effort throughout our recovery, uh, and to staff, uh, to Speaker Johnson, uh, to Jason Goldman, and to my Chief of Staff, uh, Megan Taddeo. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Council Member. Unless anyone else has a uh, opening statement you'd like to make? Clark, please call the roll. Thank you. Good morning. Yes. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on small business. All items are coupled. Chair Jonai. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Rodriguez votes aye. Levin. Aye. Councilmember Levin votes aye on all. Rosenthal. 
with congratulations and gratitude to the bill sponsors and to the chair, we really have to go after these third party apps that are uh, really destroying so many of our small businesses and the delivery workers. Uh, so I really appreciate the time and attention y'all have put into this bill. Thank you, I vote aye on all. Perkins. Perkins votes aye on all. Thank you. Brooks Powers. Permission to explain my vote. Um, I just want to congratulate um, Chair Joni for all of the work that's been put behind this package of bills that um, would be helpful and supportive of our small business, especially as someone who represents a district that um, has so many small businesses that are a cornerstone to our local economy, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Dinowitz. Aye on all. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. Mr. Chair, that is the full committee. Thank you. This concludes today's vote and hearing. I can Riverdale into, I don't know where. I'd like to congratulate Chair Joni. <laughs> <laughs> From the West.